Okay, we are on our 10th video on this spot illustration doing full color. I wanted to catch you up on what we had done so far. And to remind you of the resources you can find under assignments. This is my exhaustive explanation of digital coloring. So we started with flat color. You can do it either as flatting with colors that are very distinct from each other, which is what I did. Underneath your vector line art. Or you can do it with what's called local color and try to use those flat colors to fill in what you think it should be. The truth is I'm going fast and for my Day of the Dead Nico, I don't have any strong preferences for what those colors should be. So I'm just just playing with it. But once you have those flat colors in there, then you can add tones with what's called duotone. So duotone, a uh, hard edge is when you cut your local color, split it into a highlight value and a shadow value, and then leave a crisp delineation between the two. It's often used in animation. It's also called cell shading. It's also called cut edge duotone, but I'll try to consistently use the term hard edge duotone. And that is separate from soft edge duotone. Soft edge duotone is when it gradates between the highlight and the shadow tone of that local color, like the different greens in the skin here, the different grays on the type. Now, when comics and professional color printing was first introduced. Uh, in the early 20th century, really around the 1930s, you started to see the first full color reproductions. They were very limited in their color range, right? So this is basically what it looked like in the 70s and 80s. This was the full mix of colors you could use. And you would actually have, for like Marvel Studios, DC Studios, you had basements where it was mostly, it's interesting, mostly retired women that needed income. I don't know why it was gendered that way, but that's how it's always written about. Would take the, the line art, the inks that were turned in, and they would do these little coatings. So they would mark them up like this. They would watercolor them, and then they would mark what code of ink that the printer needed to use in each of those spaces. So there wasn't any kind of color scanning or then color reproduction from digital files. All of it was controlled completely by the printer, like how to flood in different areas with ink. That changed in the 90s when we changed to uh, printing on white coated paper instead of newsprint. Newsprint can only print at 150 pixels per inch. White coated paper can handle up to 300 or more. And that allowed for new options in digital printing in the late 90s when digital was taking over everything like color grading for film and, and animation. But that new option, which wasn't available before, is called full spectrum. And full spectrum is basically, you can do anything you want. You can use the full color palette everywhere. It's basically painting. The problem with it is, if you remember this example from before, is when you use full spectrum, it tends to compete with the line art. So here's a duotone example of that same character, soft edge duotone. Here's a flat color example of that same cover. And so to add full spectrum, you need to be careful. And when you do it too much, it just becomes a little hard to tell what you're looking at, right? I remember in the late 90s, there would be these amazing digital colorists and, but they would go on top of really clean inks. And then you'd have like an F-14 jet, like fully drawn and outlined, but then it's also fully colored with every reflection in the metal. And it was just too much to look at, right? The line art and the coloring competing with each other. So what you'll notice is when you use full spectrum, you'll also start to use some special effects. So if we see the full spectrum here on Wonder Woman, it's very subtle, but notice that she has pink and purple and yellow in the colors of her face, right? It's not just light and dark yellow. It's not just light and dark pink. It's not just light and dark purple. It's full spectrum. Uh, most of her body is just 
duotone, but it, it's done in different steps. Even though it's fairly hard edged, it's done in these, these different steps to look a little bit softer. You can see pinks and purples in the reflections of her, of the metal on her suit. But generally, this is, this is how I prefer to do full spectrum. It's pretty subtle under the line art. And then the only place you need a special effect or a color hold to help this character stand out is on her lasso. And that's why I like to use Wonder Woman as my through example on this, because she always has the golden lasso. And if you leave the golden lasso just outlined with black, it doesn't look so golden anymore, right? So often you replace that black outline with what's called a color hold, with like a gold color or uh, a darker yellow. This is another aspect that I like of full spectrum, but you'll see how this full spectrum color really starts to weaken the line art. The line art is intentionally softened and it's done with a color hold that goes on top of the line art that is gradated. So here's a line replacement color hold and here's a gradation color hold. It all goes over the top of the black line art and it helps to sell the full spectrum color again with yellows, pinks and purples in the tonality. Here's a, a classic watercolor example of full spectrum. So it can give kind of an, an old world illustration look, right? Where this dragon is both brown and pink and blue, you know, all kind of blurring together, but still underneath line art. And then you see a very digital example here with Joshua Middleton, who's just an amazing digital colorist. But it takes a lot of care to like find those tones and those values to go with line art. Some more full spectrum examples. Again, I think it works best when it's fairly subtle. Even if you're doing kind of full rendering of painting, notice that the line art's pretty, pretty thin in all of these examples. So the example of this Hellboy is so different than this example of Hellboy. Because if you tried to do full spectrum color with such heavy line art, it would just look really bizarre. So whether you're going subtle or graphic, you kind of choose your battles. So here's some more, more ambitious full color. And then we get into some more of these like hand done examples where you bring in watercolor textures or other kind of printing effects. And you're just not limited in how you color. So color holds. They're any, they're a special effect. They're anything that goes on top or replaces the black line art. So you see this glowing lasso. If that was outlined in black, like she is, that just wouldn't work at all. So this is a really dramatic example of a color hold, not just on the coloring in the lasso. In fact, the lasso is colored white, but that the black lines have been replaced with this orange and bright yellow. That's what makes it look like it's glowing. So here is the, the fully rendered Wonder Woman. We last saw the soft edge duotone. Now this is with color holds in the hair, uh, kind of full spectrum in some ways on the reflections in the middle of the costume and the soft glow color hold on the lasso. So color holds can replace the outline entirely or just be used for special effects. I really like this kind of use of it. This is a gradient color hold. So what used to be black line art is replaced with a gradient. It's easy to do, I'll show you. Or here it's being replaced with purple to give a little bit more atmosphere. Here it's inverted. And so on and so forth. But it always starts as black line art that then is changes its color. All right. So when should you use what type of coloring? Well, if you're going for like really clean graphics, these are kind of vintage stickers. Flat color works great. But notice you'll also have a lot of full bleed, a lot of solid blacks. If you're going for poster design, using just the most ambitious coloring you can imagine, then this is a nice case study example. These artists are all found on Behance. Good place to, to find a subject for your final presentation. And I have a link here to this artist Behance.
And this is an artist that is trying to make the most ambitious digital images possible because they got into the NFT market. And so all of this is about just insane coloring. But what I like about Behance is it will often show process. So lots of details, but then you can see the line art it started with in different details, and then the full process of coloring. And this is the, a great kind of extra for your final presentations to understand how an artist makes their work. So they're just sketching digitally. And then they're cleaning up with clean line art. So that would be our vector, right? And then behind the line art, they're starting to color in. So they start with flats and then they do tones. And now they're doing more and more kind of color hold special effects. Notice the little offsets, little whites that are next to the black lines until it just is overwhelming so that you have to own this NFT before someone else gets it. But if a whole comic book was colored that way, it would be kind of a, a bear to read, right? <laughs> to get through it. So the more you, you invest in your coloring, sometimes the, the more it hurts communication. So it's kind of the difference between graphic arts, fine arts. And then I wanted to point out, much like when we put our creature into our landscape, you can often have different coloring for your focal points like character design. So this is duotone, a uh, hard edge for the characters, but the background you'll notice is full spectrum and soft edged and basically just digital painting, right? And the two go together very well. We're used to that. And then probably my favorite digital colorist working right now actually lives in Austin, works as a video game designer in Austin, but has an independent comic called Non-Player, which in 12 years, he's only produced two issues, but they take a lot of work. So each page takes him about 10 to 15 hours. He wakes up at 3 a.m. each morning and works on it until 6 a.m. Then he goes to work. He's developed kind of a, an online club at Project Waldo, which is appropriate for my Halloween costume, where people work on the creative projects at 3 a.m. and kind of share them. But his process is pretty fascinating. So this is what his comic looks like. Let's show it really quickly. And he does everything himself, right? Which is why professional comics, which come out more on a schedule, have a separate writer, a separate penciler, a separate inker, a separate colorist, a separate letterer, you know, because all these things take some time. But to do it all yourself means you have full control. And it just takes him a long time to make all these decisions which you can see, this is actually the first page of his first comic. And he had to, oh, that's a bummer. <laughs> he had to figure out what his whole process was and just finding the palette, finding the ways he wanted to do it. It's basically duotone. I'll make it full screen here. But just because you've chosen some colors doesn't mean you can't, because it's digital, go back and make alterations and changes. So you can see all of his detailed line art, his flats, then his local color, then some duotones, and then some gradient duotones, soft edge, then making some different color decisions, and then with the soldiers in the front trying to decide if they're going to be lighter on a darker background or darker on a lighter background, and where he wants the focal points, just that's, that's the process. And we're just trying to do a spot illustration. But in the next assignment, we're gonna be adding to this spot illustration some text and making it a full poster. We'll have to think of the background, we'll have to think of borders, we'll have to think of all that stuff. All of that is to preface, how do we finish this off to turn it in today? I've added duotone color, right? Like duotone shadows. I have them at different opacities. Because if you keep these things layered, then you can play with them more fully. I can do full spectrum. I can do soft edge duotone. I can do color holds. There's lots I can add. 
But at this point, I want to think, what's the atmosphere I want for the piece? 